We are going to be making this painting today. It is the Sombrero Galaxy. My God, I almost forget that. <laughs> um, and I'm going to show you the easiest way to get through this painting. This painting is done in oil paints. And honestly, it's not as intimidating as you think. Here is a close-up of the painting. Also, I just want to address the elephant in the room. I have decided to be a bit more myself in these videos. I still have like a relaxing British accent, but I just, I'm more of a laughy giggly kind of person. So the video is gonna be a little bit more like that. All right, let's get to it. I have a prepped canvas and that means it's dry black gesso, something slippy like linseed oil and then covered in pigment. In this case, it is a dioxine purple, which is beautiful, but it could be any color as long as it's transparent. Now heads up, you did just see me use a palette knife and I actually don't recommend that. I wanted to show you me making a mistake, a genuine mistake too. And if you're wondering what I'm painting with, I'm using a makeup brush. Um, they're a challenge to clean, but they make such beautiful soft blends. We really need to make a super soft, consistent glow. And this is actually not how you do it. When you use a palette knife, you get a consistent patches of white. Makes sense, it's kind of a bit rumbly. But what we're trying to do here is create a really smooth background glow. We want a really large disc it's going to look a bit like a big sausage and a giant ball in the middle of it. It's a bit of a ball and sausage situation. I realize it's not working out perfectly, so my goal is I'm just going to blend it out and then we're going to start again. And I was considering editing the video without all of this beginning stuff in, but I think it's important for you to know that even as a full-time artist, you have to trial and error your way through these processes. I always love the bit of Bob Ross videos where he makes sound effects for his brushes, like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Anyway. So to prepare ourselves for day two, I am just pulling out the glow. It needs to be significantly bigger. And I also want to make it whiter, but in doing that, I just had so much paint on the canvas and it just wasn't working out. We're gonna wait a few days and then we're gonna come back because we are not quitters, okay? Several days later, we are back. That light purple section in the middle is bone dry. And we're adding dioxin purple in the outside and then pure white, unadulterated in the center. And we're gonna make a big loopy disc again. We're back to a sausage and ball situation, but it does look a bit more like satin. It's quite pretty actually. The goal is that we really want this to be pure in the middle. And if I was doing this again, when I set up the initial black canvas, I would not have the purple in this middle bit. I would leave it out. I didn't want to contaminate this white, so I've even changed the way that I do these brush strokes. We want it to be really soft and lovely. And so I'm just going back and forth over the exact same section rather than working from the dark into the light. And that has meant that it's really smooth. Now, I'm expanding the disc because it's a little too tiny and I'm adding some undulations just around the disc area though. Once we've added all of this additional white, we are going to go back and blend it out. I'm using a ginormous soft Bob Ross brush. Bob bless you all, everybody. You want to do little tiny weeny circular motions, almost like you're tickling the canvas and you need to wipe the brush in between each little tickly session because we don't want to contaminate any of the white. There is so much blending, so we're gonna skip forward a little bit, adding a very bright punch of white for the center and adding those undulating clouds. I am not sweeping my brush. I'm kind of rolling it along because we want it to be inconsistent. And we need these sections to be pretty bright because we want the dust lanes to stand out. All of these white sections will also need to be blended out, but we're gonna be using a really soft 
dagger brush. Very long bristles, very gentle. Trying to make that sort of beautiful cloud-like feel. We want to avoid having too many obvious brush strokes. Using a soft, wide blending brush, little tiny circular motions again, softening the whole thing. And then we're gonna go back and add some more white. And we're gonna go back and forth a few times. At the top, we're gonna to be adding these swooshes, kind of circular sections right there, you can see. We wanna make it look like it's a disc that's flat on. In front of the core, we want it to look extra bright. So I'm going to pick up a big pile of paint and again, roll the brush in front of that core of the galaxy. And it's gonna look like the core is illuminating the center once we get to the next stage. It's looking so pretty already. It just makes me so happy to see how this is forming up. And even at this early stage, it's starting to look a bit galaxy-like. It's time to add the dust lanes. I've loaded the palette knife underneath with dioxine purple, and you have to make it look almost spiky underneath the palette knife because we want it to lay down inconsistently. Nature isn't repetitive when it comes to how clouds look. So we really want this to be almost like a rough rumbly, kind of like a, a rock-like texture. Imagine that we are painting these big clumps of dust and gas and they all coalesce together. It's much better to build this up little by little, just small decisions. You don't need too much paint on your palette knife. Just take it easy and work slowly. The outer edges of these galaxies, the dust lanes appear a lot thicker and darker because they aren't illuminated by the core. So just bear that in mind that in the center, we want it a little lighter, going up to a lot darker and a lot thicker towards the edges. I saw a few little weird bits, so I decided I would blend them out, but actually that was a mistake. Mistake number two, because the dust lanes in galaxies are usually pretty strong objects. They're not blended in any way. And after looking at how it blended out, I decided to wipe it back, remembering that underneath isn't black because we'd already got a dry layer. And instead I'm going to go back at this a different way using a smaller brush, adding in the white, and then re-adding the darker sections. You know, when we allowed the painting to dry, I suppose that's the closest thing you're going to get to having a save point in real life. And oil paint wipes away really easily, revealing all the stuff that was below. That can be very helpful, or it can be kind of difficult if you're not used to it. So now with this tiny weeny little brush, I'm adding in those little white highlights and just very softly blending it out just to lighten the area and going back in with a palette knife and a little care more carefully now adding those darker sections. I'm actually swiping the palette knife and now going in with a paintbrush just to really add those darker edges. Now with the brush, you're kind of doing like jabbing motions and keeping it as inconsistent as possible, but we do want to create some undulation and those C-shaped swirling sections. The idea is that we want it to look like a disc swirling around, coming from closer to further away. And as we go to the far end of that C, we want it to be faded out just a little bit to give the impression that there's some physical distance involved, which in this case is thousands of light years, most likely. I really felt that this would look so much nicer with just a 
slightly fatter disc. So I'm adding a little extra of those dark dust lanes below the disc. Part of this is because when you eyeball the whole image, you want some level of symmetry. And I'm adding in a little extra white. Just editing the shape. Adding those highlights at the very top of the disc kind of makes it look like the light is catching almost like the top of mountains, if you can imagine. And then I'm going in underneath the disc and adding in a little tiny light highlight, almost like it's being backlit, which it technically is. Not all galaxies have this, but from an aesthetic point of view, it does make the disc way easier to see. And I don't know, it just looks kind of cool. Looking at the whole disc, it felt a little wonky. So I'm adding this highlight a little lower so the whole thing feels again, more symmetrical. Now you can, I suppose, mark things out before you paint to get a perfect disc, but most of the time just eyeballing it works just as well. Not every galaxy out there is perfectly symmetrical, but usually when it's a flat disc like this, there is some level of symmetry, sym symmetrical, symmetry, you know what I mean. We're finally coming to the end stages of painting this beautiful galaxy. And I noticed that there was quite a lot of the dark sections of the disc that were nice and detailed, but not enough of the light sections. So we're going in with the tiniest, teeniest little brush and adding in some of those white details to indicate all of that beautiful swirliness within the disc. Once that is done, we're going to take another look at that core. I want it to be as pure white and as brilliant and as bright as it can possibly be. But also because it was a tiny weeny bit off center. Once we've finished with the core, it'll be time to add a few stars. With a very tiny brush, we're gonna thin the paint down just a little bit. And we're gonna be adding some blobs randomly. Now these blobs will eventually be blended out and these are going to be the background glow. And then we're going to go back in and add another pinpoint star within the glow. Now you blend them out using a round brush and tapping them but it takes a long time, so I'm gonna fast forward. And now I'm using a splatter brush. What I'm trying to do is avoid getting the splatters for the stars over the center. I kind of want to just have them in the darker section. The only thing left to do now is touch up that signature and we are done. I just can never quite get over how beautiful the universe is. And every time I paint these, I just think about how ginormous it is and how it's full of these really beautiful things. And the more you think about it, the more it breaks your brain. <laughs> If no one has told you today, I want you to know that you are so loved and you are so appreciated. 
May the wind always be at your back. May your sky always be filled with stars. And if you want to take this painting on and try it yourself, remember, mistakes are essential to learn and it's part of the process. <laughs>